This is what you're going to get from today's practice. Your one and only day is going to be set right. You only have one day on it. Let's set it on the right course. Today is the day. Now is the time because today will never, ever, ever come again. So make the best of it, right? Enjoy it. I'm Jan. This is 316 Yoga. This is your yoga from home. This is where you do your yoga your way. Don't sweat it. Don't worry about it. Just do it. Just try. Just try Join us every single day. Every day our practices are different, and every day your practices are complete. You can do all of the practice. You can because you modify it. That's the secret word. Modify it and make it work for you. As I said, every day the practices are complete. They're going to help improve your flexibility, your mobility, and improve your strength. And in fact, that's the word for today. It is complete. And the word complete means having all parts, having all parts, having everything work together, lacking nothing whole entire complete so not only if you do your practice every day throughout the week it's one hour long stick around for what you can do do it your way it'll be complete and it'll help you in so many ways in your life so think of the word complete is just about today too. wrap the practice up to be complete it's your yoga you're gonna improve your uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> flexibility, mobility, and strength, as I said, but your yoga joins your body, your mind, your spirit to just for that, for just that complete good feeling. Okay, here's the deal. Let's measure it. How can we do that? By locking in a stress number. Stress number, scale of one to five, one to 10, think smiley face, frowny face in the doctor's office. Give it a number and let's work on bringing that number down. The stress comes on down as you just feel like everything's going to be complete when you're done with your practice. All right, let's begin by opening up. How are we going to do that? Let's come into pentacle pose. Today's practice is a practice where we're mostly on the ground. We're, we have a little bit of balancing, but you don't have to do it if you don't want to. You modify it. So today, you know, maybe it's more of a challenge, less of a challenge, but trust me, it's gonna work. All right, so you're gonna come to recline. Spread your feet so your heels are kind of at the end of your mat. Your little island of peace here. Maybe hands to prayer center, or maybe not. Just work your way on down to a reclined position. We're gonna take pentacle to begin. Open up in your pentacle pose. Bring your arms up overhead, palms face up. Take a big breath in through your nose and a big sighing breath out through your mouth. So use the ground here to just keep your back nice and straight. Just get comfortable and just let the outside world go. Maybe your pinky toes fall a little bit toward the earth. Arms can be lifted. Bringing your body into a capital letter X shape. And if that's just not cutting it, you know, 
Think of like a snow angel. Bring your arms down a little bit. Maybe that'll feel better in your shoulders. We're going to get more into the shoulders in a little bit with a couple of things, that big hug pose that we do. And then also we'll do it even more intensely with a broken wing pose. So just settle in. Big breath in. <sighs> sighing breath out. Think of sighing out all the tension in your body. Breathe in. <sighs> Sigh it out. Let it go. Nothing else matters but this moment on your mat. Don't think of what you got to do next. Don't think of what you did wrong earlier. Just enjoy. Big breath in. <sighs> Big breath out. You'll have an opportunity again to come into your pentacle pose for a brief little break to reset everything back to the midline. That's kind of how it feels, like everything's just nice and balanced. Or you can stay here quite a bit longer if you choose to not do our little balancing sequence. It is up to you. Everything's up to you, isn't it? <sighs> Choose well. Choosing your yoga is choosing well. All right, pentacle pose. Let's take it to another nice stretching pose called banana asana. So bring your feet together at the midline of your body so your heels are on your mat. Bring your arms on up overhead. Try to keep your shoulders down. Bring your palms to touch. So you're in a stick pose here. Just kind of stretch it out right at the midline of your body. Maybe point your toes, reach your arms even higher to the top of your mat, bringing your biceps near your ears. If that doesn't feel good, leave your hands right where they are with a little bend in your elbows. Stretch in your stick pose. You look like a big number one, a big letter I, Take a big breath in and a big breath out. Now let's work our way into that banana asana pose. All right, think of a banana. It sounds silly, but it's easy to remember. A banana has a curve. Bananas have different shapes of curves. Some are more curvy than others, and it's all okay. So let's bring our body into the shape of a banana by bringing the heels to the bottom right corner of your mat. And then your arms, which are together, try to think of your fingers going to the top right corner of your mat. So you're curving your body, getting a nice lateral flexion of your spine here. Here's the trick though, try to keep both shoulders down. You don't wanna roll onto that right hip to try to increase the curve of the banana. Just find the flexibility that is yours here in your side body. It doesn't have to be a lot, it's just a gentle curve. Shoulder is down, heels are at the bottom corner of the mat, and your left hip is down. Take a couple of breaths here, nice deep breaths in through the nose, <sighs> and sighing breaths out, let it go. Maybe you work yourself to a time with your breath where you wanna close your lips and breathe in and out of your nose. That's called ujjayi pranayama breath helps you build heat in your body, and it just helps calm you down. If you like that type of breathing, go for it. And if you prefer breathing into the nose and out through the mouth, whatever works, but just try to keep the breaths deep. All right, we've done a side curve this way. Let's work it back to the midline. Remember, stick pose. Heels at the midline, so where your arms stretch it out here. No rush, no hurry, it's doing your body good. Trust me, take your time. You don't have to be on high all the time. You can take it slowly and reap the benefits. Bring your heels to the left bottom corner of your mat or something like that. And then work your arms to the top left corner of your mat keeping the right hip down, keeping the right shoulder down, keeping your chin away from your chest. See what you can do here, just explore. Everybody's a little different. Do what feels good for you, modify so it feels right for you. Modification might be more of a bend in your elbows. Breathe in breathe out and enjoy the moment.
As you're ready, slowly work the legs back to the midline of the body. Reach through the toes and the fingers. And let's do it again. Take your right heel, take your heels to the right corner of your mat. Take your arms to the top right corner of your mat. Same thing, hips are down, shoulders down. This time, take your right hand and grab your left wrist and give it a little gentle tug. And the same thing with your outside leg, your left leg, lift it up and cross the ankles. If you like that, stay here for a couple breaths. If you don't like it, unwind it back to the way you were. Maybe uncross the ankles, maybe release the hand. Your call, your yoga, just try. And most importantly, modify. All right, release the hands, release the ankle, come back slowly to the midline of the body, lengthen up. Exhale, soften up. Same pose, other side, left heels to the left corner of your mat. Arms reaching long as best you can, and then let the fingertips go to the top left corner of your mat, keeping your right shoulder down and your right hip down. Take the left hand, capture the right wrist, and give it a gentle little pull here. Take the right leg, lift it up, and cross it over the left ankle if you like that. Couple of sweet breaths here. Soften your jaws. Just feel the goodness of the stretch up the right side of your body. Uncurl, unwind, leg comes down, hands go back to the midline of your body. Take your gentle stick pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let's do supine twist. Bring your arms down by your side. Slowly float them down. Drag your right heel up, bending your right knee. Capture underneath your right knee with interlaced fingers. Or if you got your strap or your little towel, you could hug your knee in here with it. Think of the strap or the towel as making your arms a little bit longer. I'm gonna interlace my fingers and hug the right knee in. Left leg, draw your toes towards your shins, keeping your left calf down. Hug this knee in good and tight. Circle the ankle in one direction, then circle the ankle in the other direction. You can stay right here if this is speaking to you. I'm going to take my left hand and do the twist part. Take the left hand, guide the right knee across the midline of the body. My right arm, I'm going to let it tee out, open up, and I'm going to look toward the right side of my room. So I'm rolled onto my left hip, taking this nice twist here. Eyes can be closed. Just, I'll talk you through it all. Just enjoy how it feels in your body. Soften your shoulders away from your ears. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Slowly make your way back to the right hip, down on your mat. Take it slowly, enjoy the getting there. The journey's half the fun. Hug the knee in again, circle the ankle, right and left. Let the right leg go long onto your mat. We're gonna repeat this pose on the other side. Draw your right toes up towards your shin, allowing your calf to rest completely on the mat. Drag your left heel up towards your bottom. Interlace your fingers or use that towel underneath your left knee. Circle the ankle in one direction, then the other. Just get some mobility going there. You'll be glad you did when we do our toes pose in a few minutes. Shoulders are down, hold on here. Right hand now guides the left knee across the midline of your body. Roll onto the right hip. Left arm tees out if you like, and then look to the left side of your body. Gaze over your left fingertips. Your palm of your left arm is up. Settle in here, hollow out your belly. Maybe take the twist a little deeper. Soften in your shoulders. 
slowly bring the left hip back down to your mat. Hug the left knee in, circle the ankle this way and that. Send your left leg down to meet the right. Once the heels touch, bend both knees, drag your heels up. Let's do a reclined goddess pose. Soles of your feet on your mat, open up your knees to the sides of the room. Soles of your feet are touching. Tee out your arms. Then once your arms are teed out, stretch and reach your fingers to the two sides of your room. And then bend your elbows, working your fingertips toward your temples. Keeping your elbows down, chest is lifted. Breathe here in this little reclined goddess pose. Take a deep breath in. And a deep, slow breath out. So you're stretching the insides of your thighs here. How does it feel? Today's practice is just gonna, I think it's a bunch of, a series of just feel good poses. Take them slowly and take the time to feel what you feel. Don't worry about how it looks. Don't think about, oh, what's next, what's next. Breathe and feel what you feel. All right, stay here if you like. I'm gonna come into a thunderbolt pose. All right, to bring your arms down by your sides, bring your knees together to touch, send your legs long and either press on up or roll on up and come into your thunderbolt. Here's thunderbolt. What you'll do is you'll sit on your heels. So knees are bent, sit back on your heels, take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Let's do it again, but this time let's add in the arms. As you inhale, send your arms up to the sky, back to the shoulders, right? Maybe touch overhead and then float the hands down as you exhale. Soften the shoulders at the bottom of your exhale. Inhale, arms go up. Hold them up at the top of your inhale and then float them on down to your exhale. Get back into the shoulders. Lift and lower. All right, so not only are you working the shoulders, think of the shoulder mobility that's happening here. Maybe a little bend in the arms, maybe that's what you need to do. It's all good, just work toward it. The more you use it, the easier it'll get. So not only are we working the shoulders here, but think of what's going on in your low body. Your knees are in a nice deep bend. You're seated back on your heels, so your ankles are getting that nice, bend like we do when we do our toes pose and our ankle flow, which is coming up. So lift and lower the wave of the breath. All right, let's finish up. Arms down by your sides. Give your shoulders a wiggle. Take your hands and walk them forward. Walk them forward, trying to keep your bottom toward your heels. Walk your hands forward, press into the earth, good and strong. Let your gaze go toward your knees. So think about this pose. It's almost, well, it's a combination of your child's pose. It's your classic child's pose because your knees and toes are together. And it's your extended child's pose in that your arms are reaching long and strong. But you've already stretched out your inner thighs when we did that goddess part. It's all good. It's all working together to be complete. Push the earth away. Think of pushing your hands a little more into your mat like you want to try to make your mat longer by stretching your fingers more toward the top of your mat. Slowly come on back up. Shoulders over your hips. Take your hands, kickstand them behind you. And then lift your chest up to the sky. Lift your chin up to the sky. Take this little teeny controlled baby back bend. Finish up, shoulders over your hips. Let's go side to side now. So you can place your hand on the ground, or if you got a block and you like blocks, you know, think of the blocks as bringing the ground up to you. I say that often. So place them at whatever height is right for you. You decide. 
Place your hand down. I'm gonna place one hand down, lift the other arm high to the sky. The arm that's lifting, that's doing some work. I'm stretching it out here, feeling the nice stretch in the entire side body. Then I'm gonna let that top arm cross over my head, over the midline of my body. Then I'm gonna use my elbow of my foundational arm, kind of like a little elevator, going up or down, whatever feels good. Maybe you play with it a little bit, up and down, just to see how good the stretch feels in this entire side body. I'm gonna remove the block and play with it a little bit more. Reach through those top extended fingers and elevator the elbow on the other arm. Chin away from the chest, top shoulder, bring it back some more. Oh my gosh, that feels different. Feels good, feels like I'm doing it right when I bring the shoulder back more. Okay, nice deep stretch. You decide how you like it. Can you keep your both bottom cheeks down? Don't let the cheek on the side of the body where the arm is on top, try not to let it pop up off of your heel. Stretch, breathe, you got it. I'm gonna slowly straighten my elbow. I'm gonna slowly come back up. I'm gonna extend both arms up to the sky. Think extended mountain arms. Spiral your pinkies in, drop your shoulders down a little bit. Maybe look up to the sky in a moment of gratitude and thanks. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Other side, bring that other arm down to the ground or to your block. Let the top arm reach good and high and then let it cross the midline of your body. Shoulder back, chin away from the chest. Hang out here for a little bit and then use that foundational elbow to get into the pose. Oh, nice stretch. All right, so think about all those muscles in between your ribs, the intercostal muscles. Stretch them out. Let them find length that feels really good. This lateral flexion of your spine is a healthy way to move. I'm gonna bring my shoulder back. I always gotta check in on that. Bring the shoulder back, because I think the tendency is to collapse forward. So bring the shoulder back. Reach through that extended arm. Chin away from the chest. Work the elevator down. To what is right for you. And you know, you get as much out of it as you put into it. So you do exactly what is right for you. When you're ready, slowly straighten that elbow, sweep both arms up to the sky. Take a brief little hands down, forward reach, just like we did earlier, like the extended child's pose arms. Breathe in, breathe out, slide the hands on back, kick stand them just briefly, send your chest up to the sky, and then finish. Bring your shoulders over your hips, think big hug. All right, arms tee out. Press the backs of your palms to the back of the room and then bring your arms, let them crisscross in front of your body. Elbows maybe stack or crisscross even more. Reach your hands toward your spine. Nice tight squeeze, soften in your shoulders and then think of the shoulders expanding to the side of your room. Nice tight hug. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's do the same thing. Be mindful of what arm is on top because we're gonna switch it out. Tee out your arms, squeeze the backs of the hands to the back of the room, crisscross the arms in front of you, a big hug with the opposite arm on top. Squeeze the fingers toward the spine, soften the shoulders away from the ears. Think of expanding through your upper back, sending your shoulders to the sides of your room. Breathe in, breathe out. All right, hands down to your thighs, lengthen up through the crown of your head. Turn your head right to left, left to right. I'm gonna get into some neck mobility, so important. Turn your head right to left, eyes can be open or closed. If closed is kind of woohoo, making you feel kind of vertigo-y, don't do it, open your eyes. All right, head goes left, head goes right. Bring it back to the midline of your body. Circle your head out on your shoulders. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Just continue to move your head left to right. Just move your neck. 
and then finish with the neck. Come back to the neck at the midline. Take your left hand, lift it up to the sky, bend that elbow, using your left hand, touch the top of your right ear, and then encourage your left ear to your shoulder. Take a deep breath in, and a deep breath out. Use your head for leverage. You know, how much can you work that neck, that ear toward the shoulder? Soften in the right shoulder, the opposite shoulder, and then finish. Come on back up, head to the midline, switch it out. Other arm reaches, I'm gonna raise my right arm up to the sky, bend the elbow, touch the top of the left ear, and then encourage the head to the right side of the body. Left shoulder is soft, hand is strong. Just nice stretch here. Breathe in. And breathe out. Good job. All right, let's come out of it. Bring your head back to the midline, nice and slowly. All right, we gotta do a child's pose. Okay, let's go into our child's pose position. We're gonna take the child's pose from child's pose to tadpole to frog. You know how that goes. You're just increasing the spread in your legs. Let's do it. All right, so I'm not gonna use a block. You can use a block if you like to bring the ground up to you. Spread your knees toward the edges of your mat. Bring your big toes to touch. Sink your hips back toward your heels. They don't have to touch on your heels, just send them back a little bit. Reach your arms long to the top of the mat. What is long? Maybe long isn't so long, that's okay. I'm gonna reach my arms to the top of the mat, bringing my forehead down to either my block or the mat. Soften in the jaws, surrender here. Don't sweat it. Do what you can with what you've got. Breathe in, breathe out. Push into the mat, sending your fingers a little closer to the top of the mat as best you can. Feel this in your armpits. Perhaps you decide to work your knees a little further apart. I'm gonna work my knees off of the mat. You could put a towel under your knees or you could turn 90 degrees so you got all that room on the mat to pad your knees. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Let it go. All right, now here the toes are touching. This is a uh, tadpole pose. Let's work it to a full frog. To do that, we'll just work your toes apart. You're gonna work your shins more parallel to the sides of your mat. Woo! I feel that really deep in the upper inner thighs. Take it to what feels right for you today. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Stay here longer if you like. Sometimes this pose really speaks to you. Stay here if it feels great. It's gonna be time for me to come out of it now by bringing my hands underneath my shoulders. Maybe I'm gonna keep the knees wide. You decide, because we're gonna go into a, uh, another child's pose. So keep the knees wide, arms reach long, hips back toward your heels, toes together. Stretch. Let's go into another animal. Let's go into cat cow. So come on up to a neutral tabletop. Shoulders over your wrists, knees underneath your hips. Push the tops of your feet into your mat. Hollow out your belly as you lengthen through your spine. Cat pose, tuck your chin to your chest, tuck your tailbone under. I think that feels really great. Tuck it under and arch your back up to the sky. Inhale, cow pose, crown of the head and tailbone lift. Breathe. Cat cow. I don't know if you can see this dog, but she, I don't want to say her name. But her, look at how her spine is going, just really off of the mat. And, and she's comfortable. Go for it. We can learn a lot from our animals, can't we? Like when they stretch, when they get up. And cats, how they stretch and arch their spine like you're doing. All right. That's your cat cow. You're moving your neck, remember, chin to your chest. Then your chin goes up toward the sky. All right, come to a neutral tabletop. Let's do a cat pulling its tail. All right, so here's the deal. Lift your right leg up, bring your right knee to about hip height, draw your heel toward your bottom. Push the weight equally into both hands. 
And maybe, you know, like kick yourself in the bottom. They bring your heel closer and closer to your bottom. Have your knee at about hip height. Now here's where you can challenge yourself by pulling the tail. Take your left hand, reach around and capture your foot. Kick into your hand. Look down toward your right fingers, breathe, and then maybe look toward the left side of your mat or over toward your left shoulder. Maybe breathe, maybe kick, a, maybe breathe, definitely breathe. Kick a little bit harder, maybe. Breathe, how are you doing? Cat pulling its tail. Let's finish here, hand comes down, knee comes down, we got another side to do. Lift your left knee up. Maybe this is what you want to do and this is how you want to be today. Try to bring your knee a little bit higher. Maybe kick yourself in the bottom. Maybe lift the right arm up, reach around and capture your left leg and kick into your hand. Kick into your hand, feel your right collarbone open up. Look to the right side of your mat. Look to the right side of your room or look over your right shoulder. Keep kicking harder, harder, harder and then finish. Bring the knee down, bring the hand down. How does that feel? Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Let's go into broken wing. Here you go, walk your hands forward. Send your knees back. Ooh, we're gonna come down to our bellies. That feels good. I'm gonna start by taking my right hand, teeing out the arm. Tee it out so your hand is at about shoulder height. Rest that shoulder down on your mat. Bend the other arm, the left arm. Put the hand underneath the collarbone. Roll onto your right side. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this feels intense in the shoulder. So your left hand, push into the mat, a little or a lot, and feel the intensity in that right shoulder. If it doesn't feel right, if it hurts, don't do it. If it's just uncomfortable, come on now, you've done more uncomfortable things. Stay here, deal with it, get through it, you can do it. Realize you are crossing boundaries. You are just creating new thresholds of excellence for your movement, but just don't hurt. If it hurts, back out. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Let's do the other side. I'm gonna roll over onto my stomach and I'm gonna stay right here just so you can see what I mean by teeing out the arm. Left arm tees out, shoulder stays down. Come onto your left cheek. Take the other arm, the right arm underneath your collarbone and roll onto your left hip. Breathe, maybe a little bend in your elbow of the left arm feels better. You decide, push into the earth, feel the goodness in this stretch of the left shoulder. Soften, think of space in the shoulder, let it go, relax, be at peace. And when you're ready, we'll finish. Come back down to your belly, place your hands underneath your collarbones and then we'll press on up to a seal pose. Soften in your glutes, your arms are strong. Come on up to standing on your knees. Let's do our toes pose, ankle flow pose. All right, so okay, we've already gotten into the feet quite a bit, so maybe this will be a little easier for you today. So come to standing on your knees, shoulders over your hips, tuck your toes under, nice big stretch in the bottoms of the feet. You got your blocks here, which are bringing the ground up to you to make this pose more accessible. Sit back onto your heels if you can, if you want to, feel the depth of the stretch here. Now you can stay right here or let's take it to an ankle pose. Put the tops of your feet on your mat with your blocks, walk them back, keep your knees zipped up, pop your knees on up toward the sky and rest onto your ankles. So just think for a moment about what you're doing. You're really stretching the ankles and the feet, taking them in that full range of motion. Let's go back and forth a few times. The blocks are a great prop here. Or you can decide to use no blocks at all and use your hands. Hands are fine, right? God gave them to you, use them, <laughs> all right? So hinge forward and back, stretching the feet. Do different things with your arms. Maybe bring them to prayer center. Back and forth, ankles to toes. This is a flow and you do it your way. All right, so here's another way. Challenge yourself, bring your hands to prayer center. Back and forth here. Toes pose, big stretch in the feet. Hello to Lynn and Diane, Christy, Stan, Tyrone, Kelly, Patricia. How are you? Rena, Kelly, Mary, Mary Beth, Lisa. Glad you guys are here. All right, 
I'm gonna take it back one more time into my ankle flow. Such an important pose. Strengthening your foundation, you know that. And you know, adjust to make it work for you. Adjust, don't quit. Don't quit, just adjust, modify. All right, let's finish here. Seated, forward fold, come to your bottom. Legs go long, toes up to the sky, lift your arms up high, breathe. Exhale, hinge forward, reach with parallel arms. Little bend in your knees might feel better if your hamstrings are tight. Reach, 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 you're still gazing forward, reach just a tenth of an inch more. Then bring your hands down to capture your calves, your ankles, whatever you can grab. Bring your elbows in towards your knees, hollow out your belly as your gaze goes towards your knees. Breathe. Inhale, come on up, shoulders over your hips. Remember when we did that reclined goddess pose? Send your legs wide and a wide-legged forward fold. Feel it back in the inner thighs again. Use your blocks if you want. Toes up toward the sky to keep your calves down. Or maybe you need a little bend in your knees. It's all good. Do you believe that? It is. As long as it doesn't hurt, it's all good. Elbows forearms to your blocks, wide-legged forward fold. Hold it here. Use your blocks, adjust the height to what feels right for you today. Maybe you wanna rest your head on a block. Not gonna stay here long because we got lots of things to rush through, to rush through, to run through, to keep you flexible and mobile. Shoulders over your hips. Let's bring our legs back together and let's do a bicycle pose. Let's do it on our forearms. So come on back, forearms on your mat, palms are uh, down on your mat, lift your legs up and then start to bicycle through your heels. All right, lots of ways to do bicycle. We do it different ways every day. All right, you don't have to do it at high intensity every single day. You can be on your forearms. Sometimes we do boat pose on our forearms too. We can do that right now. Maybe you wanna keep pedaling. You decide, pedal through your heels, then straighten your legs and come into your boat. You can hold it here, adjust your heels, bring them down a little bit, or bring them up a little bit. You decide you're on your forearms. Then maybe let's kick it up a notch and come on up to seated. Keep the bend in your back, recline in your back and hold here. Now what you can also do, I'm gonna bring the feet down, take your strap, bring the strap underneath the center of your feet and lean on back. Shoulders are back, back is nice and straight. Little bend in your knees, lift your heels up. Maybe today, that's as far as you want to go. Another option would be to straighten your legs, hug your elbows in, and hold it here in your boat pose. Find your balance. You got it? Maybe close your eyes and find your balance. Hold it. Core is strong. Let's do even more for strengthening the core. Let's bring the heels on down. Heels down, lengthen up through your back, nice and straight. Walk your hands down the strap as you forward fold again here, toward, gaze towards your knees. Now, remove the strap. Let's come into our one minute plank. You knew it was coming. We try to do a one minute plank every day. We set a timer with the timer up on the screen just for you to measure, if you want, your progress. You don't have to measure, you don't have to do it. You do exactly what you want. So I'm gonna come into a crouching panther. That's gonna be my plank pose for today. So from a neutral tabletop, send your hands a little more forward. You take the variation of plank that you like. Maybe you stay on your knees, drop to your forearm, and adjust your knees, and shift your weight more forward, just so you feel more engagement in your belly. For the crouching panther pose, if you wish to join me, my shoulders are over my wrists. I'm gonna tuck my toes towards my shins and I'm gonna lift my knees up just an inch or two from the ground as we start a one minute timer. Here we go. All right, so with this timer, hold it here. Crouching tiger. All right, you are strong. How does this feel on your wrists? Here's a little tip. Whenever we're in this sort of position, like in a down dog or whatever, uh, you could ball your hands into fists. All right, we're already 15 seconds into this pose. That helps in the wrists a little bit. Here's something else that helps. 
kind of grip your um, mat like you're a little gecko pushing into the pads of your fingers but push a little more into your thumb and your pointer finger seems to alleviate some of the tension here on the hands 20 uh what do we got 20 seconds to go hold on here you know you can always drop your knees to the ground if you want breathe hold on 20 seconds 15 seconds you can do anything for 10 seconds hold on push the earth away lengthen through your spine know that you're strong don't give up don't quit just adjust in these five four three two one and done there we go all right come down to your knees how did you do plank strengthens everything you got that crouching tiger crouching panther whatever you want to call it is a really good pose to build strength Feeling good? I hope so. All right, I'm gonna grab a drink. Time flies and you're having fun. Come back to that pentacle pose. Remember that? Come back to pentacle either for a while or briefly. I'm just gonna do it briefly because I wanna do some standing. You decide, maybe you stay here in pentacle. All right, pentacle pose. Body looks like a capital X. Breathe, adjust with maybe snow angel arms, whatever works. I'm gonna come out of the pentacle, stay if you want. Just a little breath here, and then I'm gonna come on up to standing. All right, make your way up to a standing position. Now here's what we're gonna do. Just a couple standing poses, but maybe you stay in your pentacle, it's all good. All right, so in this standing pose, what we're gonna do, first thing I'm gonna do is grab a block. I'm gonna place it on the ground, I'm gonna stretch my calves. So here's the deal, I'm gonna come back here, and, Using this block, I'm gonna place the ball of my foot on the block and then bring the heel down. Just a nice little calf stretch, just for a little bit. Hold on here, oh, feels good to stretch the calves. A lot of us have really tight calves, maybe you do too. All right, stretch it out. Let's switch to the other side. Or stay longer if you want. So place the ball of the foot on the edge of the block, heel down, how you doing? All right, and think about all those years of wearing high heels. Anybody wear high heels anymore? All those years of wearing high heels. Think of your calf, it shortens, right? So we gotta wanna stretch it out, wanna lengthen it. Most of us have really tight calves. Embrace the burn. All right, that's about the same amount of time. Do that throughout the day if you need to, you decide. All right, calves are stretched, let's do you will look taller. You know this pose, I love this pose. Bring your body into the capital letter Y shape, U. Arms are uh, long, backs of your hands to the back of the room, U. Elbows down, letter W, squeeze your spine together, you will, two L's forward and back, look. Tee out your arms for taller, do it again, U. Will look taller with this pose. Straighten you up through the spine and just feel good posture. Again, you will look taller. Hands to prayer center. Tree pose, Vrikasana, like this little skeleton that I brought today. Bend your knee, open it up to the side of the room. Place the sole of the bent legs foot up a little bit higher or kickstand it or use a chair or work the leg high up onto the thigh. Don't put the foot on the knee. Hands to prayer center or grow your branches and sway them as you keep your strong balance. When you're ready, hands back to prayer center, knee to the front of the room, right foot comes down, left foot meets. Other leg, open up the opposite leg to the side. Slip the foot up to wherever is good for you today, but just avoid placing the foot onto the knee. Lengthen up through your spine, focus. Focus forward where the, knee, where the wall and the ceiling meet. Grow your branches if you like. Sway them and finish. Hands back to prayer center. Guide the knee to the front of the room and then plant the foot. Right leg, lift it up, knee to hip height, hug it in with interlaced fingers. Hold it here, lengthen up, and then circle your ankle a few times. Breathe, you got it. Release your hands from your knee 
and send your arms up for a one-legged mountain. Lengthen through your fingertips. Think of help coming from above, lifting your fingers up. And then plant the left foot and right foot together, hands to prayer center. Plant that foot, lift the opposite knee. Lift it up, interlaced fingers, hug underneath it, and then circle your ankle this way and that. Breathe, hold on, squeeze it nice and tight. Finish up, release the hands, but keep the knee lifted. Lift the arms up, extended mountain, reach, extend, go high. When you're ready, bring the foot down, hands back to prayer center, take a deep breath in, and an exhale, forward fold. We're gonna meet our friends who are in pentacle and we're gonna work ourselves into a crocodile. All right, bend your knees a little bit, give them a wiggle. You're folded forward, shake your neck. Come on down to your mat. For your crocodile pose, those that are in pentacle, bring your arms down by your sides, legs together, and then roll over onto your belly. Bend your elbows, place one hand on top of the other. Legs are long on your mat, they don't have to be zipped up, just in a comfortable position, don't even think about them. Place your head onto your folded hands. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Let it go, let it go, let it go. All right, let's start by lifting the upper body. So keep your head glued to your hands, your elbows spread wide. On an inhale, lift through the chest, up, up, up a little bit. You just come up a couple inches and hold here. Keep the tops of your feet down on your mat and then lower. Lift and lower. Lift up, exhale, lower. Other half of your body. Keep your head down, your hands on your head, your head on your hands. Then lift the low body, lift your legs up. Balance on your pelvis here, hold it. Hold it and lower. Let's do it again, lift the legs up, hold it. and lower one more time, third time's the charm. Lift your legs up, maybe even a little bit higher, and then release your legs down. All right, how did you do with that? Place your hands underneath your collarbones, press on up, seal pose, remember this one? Nice job, and then flip on over to your back, but bring your two blocks with you, and bring your eye shade and your towel up near your shoulders, but have your blocks Maybe on one side, near your waist. Let's go into a bridge pose. Hands to prayer center, slowly recline. This was my little personal challenge all the time and I encourage you to do it too. Try to lower down nice and slowly, keeping your core good and strong. Try to lower down and avoid a clunk at the end. Once you're all the way down, let's do bridge pose. Bend your knees, have the blocks within uh, grabbing distance. Knees are bent, soles of the feet are down on the mat. Lift your hips up good and high. Lift your hips up really high. Walk your heels closer to your bottom. Push your hips even higher, hold it here. Breathe in, breathe out. Push hard into your feet, lift your hips even higher. You got it. Take your two blocks now, and you're gonna have them side by side at their most stable height. Slip them under your bottom. So they're low, it's low, uh, low height. Have them under your bottom and you're creating just that big surface area for your bottom. Send your legs long for that pontoon pose. Legs are long, your bottom is supported on the blocks, a nice stretch through your hip flexors. Legs are long and pretty much together, heels down on your mat. Arms T out, breathe in, <sighs> breathe out, stretching out the hip flexors. Breathe in, breathe out. All right, another big pose for your hip flexors. Bend your knees, come back to your bridge pose as you scoot your hips up high to the sky. Remove your blocks. Roll your spine down one vertebra at a time. Let's do a reclined pigeon. Left leg goes along on your mat. Heel is down on the mat. Bend your right knee, hug it in. Breathe, circle the ankle in one direction, then the other. 
Now bend your left knee, dragging the heel up. Place the outside of the right ankle on top of the left knee. Open up by pressing into the inner right thigh. You can use a towel, a strap, your hands, or nothing at all. Today I'm gonna do nothing at all. I'm gonna tee out my arms, and I'm gonna lift my left foot up off of the mat. Lifting the left foot up off of the mat, I'm just gonna encourage my left knee up toward my chest while encouraging the outside of this right knee more toward the bottom of my mat. So I'm just gonna, with my core strength, draw the left knee in toward the chest, send the right knee away from the body and just hold on here and then plant the left foot down and the right foot down, sending both legs long on the mat. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Drag the left heel up towards your body, interlaced fingers underneath the left knee, circle the ankle this way and that. Hold on to that left knee, drag the right heel up, crisscross into a figure four, bringing the outside of the left ankle onto the right thigh. Create that figure four here, press the inner left thigh open. I'm gonna tee out my arms, or maybe you prefer to interlace your fingers or use a strap. As you lift the right knee up, outside of the left knee, draw it toward the bottom of the mat, right knee, hug it in toward your chest. I'm not gonna use anything at all, just gonna see what happens with no props. I'm gonna circle the ankle, drawing the knees tighter up toward the body, sending the left knee further away. Just letting this stretch happen with no props at all. Now it's time to bring the left foot down. Right foot comes down too. You know what would feel really good is a brief little bridge pose. Press your feet into your mat, lift your hips on up, bring your arms down by your sides if that feels good. Press into your feet, this time interlace the fingers underneath your low back, pressing your pinkies into the mat, lift higher, higher, higher. Release the hands from behind your low back. Roll your spine down one vertebra at a time. Bring your tailbone down last. Best cue for that is to keep your navel tucked toward your spine until you're all the way down and then release your tailbone. Time for final Shavasana. Legs go long on your mat. Eye shade or towel to cover your eyes because it feels really great to block out the light. Arms down by your sides. Palms face up help you feel open to new possibilities. Palms face down help you feel more grounded and secure. Maybe that's what you need today. Do what's right for you. If your palms are up, we did a lot uh, in the shoulders today. External rotation of the shoulders is what you want. Think about it. If your arms or palms face down, your shoulders are kind of curled in, which is a position most of us are in most of the time. Open up through the shoulders, like we did with that big hug, like we did with teeing out our arms in uh, You Will Look Taller, and all the teeing out of the arms we did in other poses, and in that broken wing. So I'm gonna be palms face up. I'm gonna tuck my wings a little bit under my shoulders. Breathe in, breathe out. Soften in the body. Soften the area between the eyebrows. Deepen your breath. Take a deep breath in and a deep, slow breath out. Here's the deal. One of the 
best props for this practice is to have your remote control nearby. Press pause on the remote if you wish to stay in your final Shavasana pose longer. I would encourage you to do so. It's a great way to just transition back into the real world. If it's time for you to conclude your practice and get on with things, take a deep breath in and a big sigh and breath out. Start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Move your wrists and your ankles however feels natural and good. On an inhale, reach high up overhead and take that big good morning stretch. Lengthen through the armpits, point through the toes, find length in your hip flexors, wiggle your hips a little bit, letting your arms work one higher to the top of the mat than the other. Exhale, bend your knees and your elbows, and then roll onto one side or the other. Bend your low arm, use your bicep as a pillow for your head, close your eyes and breathe. With your eyes closed or open, it's up to you. Just, you know, know there are different ways. Either press on up or come on up to a comfortable seated position and we'll say goodbye. So crisscross at the legs. <laughs> Hands to prayer center, lengthen up. Exhale, soften up. <sighs> let it go, let it go, let it go. Gently blink your eyes open. Ta-da, you did it. One hour of yoga. How was it for you? All right, remember we took a stress number in the beginning. What is that stress number now? I guarantee it's lower. That's one of the beautiful benefits of your yoga. It just really helps bring everything together, your body, your mind, your soul. Today, as you go on, turn your obstacles into opportunities and turn your problems into possibilities. How's that? Love you guys. See you on your mats tomorrow. Bye. You are a silly dog. Yes, you are. Good girl. <laughs> Adios. You're still here, and I'm really glad for that. Keep this in mind. The path is made through repetition. Keep showing up, and good things will happen. You know that. I'm glad that you're still sticking around. Tell your friends what the yoga is doing for you. Our yoga is free for anybody and everybody on Facebook and YouTube, and they can join in anytime from the privacy of their own home. Tell them about our practice, please. If you'd like to support our broadcast, you can visit our website. It's www.316yoga.com. Stay on your path, enjoy your yoga, and have a great rest of your day. See you on your mats tomorrow.